at GPT plugins just launched, and this is gonna be huge. Third-party applications like Instacart, Kayak, TripAdvisor, and more are coming to chat. I just can't overstate how big I think this is gonna be. Remember when the iPhone launched, it was pretty awesome, but it had no apps, and then we got the App Store, and it was like, whoa, this is gonna be a thing. And I think this exact same thing is gonna happen with ChatGPT. So here we're doing some restaurant planning, we're calculating the calories of a meal, and we also wanna order ingredients from Instacart. Normally you'd have to jump around three or four different websites, you have to put in a lot of information, but ChatGPT is able to do this with the extensions built into this new version. The two most important ones are first, web browsing. Because ChatGPT can connect to the internet, you can now ask it questions and it will go out to the internet, fetch the information that you need, and then drop it right Right back into the chat-based result. This is similar technology to what's being used in Microsoft Bing, but here we see it directly in the ChatGPT interface. The second important extension that's built in is the ability to have memory. Traditionally, ChatGPT won't necessarily learn more about you or understand who you are, but they're building in an extension for memory so that long-term ChatGPT can learn more about you as a particular user, some of the preferences and habits that you have. And so by and large, this is making ChatGPT more accurate, more knowledgeable about how it interacts with you. In fact, this is the theme for many of the extensions in ChatGPT. Instead of just auto-completing using the database of ChatGPT and having this error of hallucinations or coming up with things, the extensions to chat GPT are gonna allow you to be much more factual. So here's another example from Greg of OpenAI, and he's asking for chat GPT to get the comments on the website Hacker News. And it's able to go to the website, extract the information, find the particular comments, and then summarize and synthesize the results into a clear and coherent answer. The other thing that's really interesting is it can allow you to run code directly in the browser. So one of the issues with ChatGPT is sometimes it'll produce results and they're not factual. And in the new version with extensions, you can actually run a little bit of code directly in a virtualized environment. So here we're asking for a question. It's able to run the calculation using a little bit of code that it also generated directly in the browser, making the results much more accurate. And this isn't just limited to small math problems. It can actually write larger Python applications run those applications and allow you to see the results as well. The other amazing thing is that you'll be able to upload files. And so traditionally ChatGPT is really operating in text and now we're able to upload files. So in this example, we're uploading a CSV with a bunch of music information and we're asking it to interpret and provide insights into the data itself. This data has 10,000 rows and it's able to synthesize all the information in those 10,000 rows, identify abnormalities or things that are correlated and then produce visualizations of those charts and graphs telling you what to go look at in the data. Absolutely astonishing. And the key thing that you just saw here is it's not just operating in text, it's able to operate and synthesize images and visualizations on the data it's producing. So this can allow you to do things that look very much like a graphing calculator or an analyst, allowing you to ask questions and get visualizations back on what that data actually means and use our brains and eyes together to see what that information looks like and feels like visually. So when Apple and Facebook first released their respective app stores, it was an absolute gold rush for app developers. And this led to thousands of companies and amazing innovations across both the web and the social landscape. And it led to amazing applications that were for the first time developed for the iPhone. This is gonna be a very similar type of revolution for app developers. So chat plugins are still really early, similar to G. GPT-4, which was just rolled out about a week ago, there is a wait list. So to get on the wait list, you either have to be a developer or they're slowly starting to roll it out to people who are subscribed to the chat GPT Pro account that's $20 a month. So super excited to see what the developer community starts to build. It's absolutely astonishing what you can accomplish with these tools. And if you're a startup founder building something incredible, I'd love to hear from you. I'm investing in companies that are building these types of technology. I'm Greg Reyes. I talk about technology and entrepreneurship. I'll catch you on the next one.